All right, Shalom, this is Hara One by Yasha Allah of the gym is Lions Den Camp. I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Haraka Kodash, Ma'ama. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Agwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. This is Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. It says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and a times and a dividing of times. All right. So, who is that talking about? Talking about America. All right. And Esau's hand. It says, But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. Now, um, so the kingdom, this kingdom is going to be given to the children of Israel someday. But the point is that Esau has changed times and laws. And he's talking about the Romans, right? And America's um, basically a revised Roman Empire, you know? And that's what it's talking about right here, America. But um, it originally started with the Greeks and then to the Romans. And through the Romans, after the Diadochi, uh, but the Seleucid Empire, uh, you had the Roman Empire that was established um, on, on paganism. And through them, they stamped us out. They stamped out the residue, the defeat of it with their military. All right. Now, but through that, they, they changed times and laws, man. And now today they have Americas um, uh, going by uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which is... Um, a Roman, a, a Roman um, Julian style calendar, all right, which was later um, amended by uh, Pope Gregory. You know, so uh, and he was all Edomites, but the, he changed times and laws because originally we had the Hebrew calendar. When we came out of Egypt, the Lord showed us the calendar, it showed us um, uh, the new moon. You know. And the, the, the first, he said, this is going to be your first month right here. So a lot of people, you had some um, some Egyptologists saying we we borrowed from the Egyptian calendar. No, we already had our calendar. It's just the Lord didn't teach us about it yet. He was establishing us and creating us to be a nation first. Then he gave us our holy days. Then he gave us our new moon feast. And later on, he gave us other feasts and other holy days during the time of Maccabees. And throughout the whole Bible, he's been building us and creating us to become a nation first, all the way from Jacob. You know, creating us to become a nation, and now um, we uh, we become a nation. Then he had to separate what he wanted from that nation, from that pile, from that lump, which is um the elect. He did that by putting mixing us in uh, with the wicked, with the Gentiles, the heathen around about us. Just like putting silver in with gold, it pulls out all the impurities and the scum from the gold, and you know then you had to pull out the impurities from the from the silver which is called scum or dross. So he mingled us in with the wicked, and through that, he pulled out all the impurities from us, man, through adversity and affliction being amongst these nations, man. All right? So it says, um, he, he thought to change times and laws, man. They changed the laws of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, you know, it, uh, with, with the um, Seleucid Empire, when they took a took away, um, who was that, Antiochus the fourth. When they took away the laws of the, of the children of Israel and took away the law of sacrifice, you know, and uh, and, and uh, uh, um, all right, so, um, you know, the Seleucid Empire with um, what's his name, Antiochus the Fourth from one sixty nine, uh, um, BC, when he was ransacking, they had, and they had the um. The Maccabean Revolt in 168 BC. They came down and, and took away um, the law of sacrifice and, and took away our laws, man. You know, that was really the base of the Roman Empire, which is the Diadochi going from the Seleucid Empire and then going into the Senate with Rome, uh, Greece, you know, and then uh, with Julius Caesar with Rome. All right, or the, or the, tri or the Triumvirate. <laughs> All right. 
So they took away the times and laws. Now this is Exodus 12 and 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. You know, I'm going to read this, um, Exodus 12 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. <laughs> to you, to us, man. So that was the beginning, really the establishment of our calendar. All right? So wherever we were in the moon cycle or whatever, at that moment, Yahweh timed everything perfect to pull us out of Egypt. Um, you know, on the night of the Passover. But also while we were in Egypt, he said, This is gonna be the beginning of months to you, man. All right, I bid. And then that month, we're gonna celebrate the Passover. And in that month, we're gonna be free from Egypt. All right, so he was establishing us, establishing our calendar. All right, could we really like um Three a thousand years or so ahead than we than, than what we think, you know. Instead of uh, two thousand eighteen, it's really like three thousand something. All right, we're going into it, so that's why we had the last Trump, the six the, from the sixth going into the seventh Trump. All right, and um, almost at the end of three thousand years, instead of the beginning of three thousand years, man. Instead of two thousand years, like some some think, like right, the calendar has been changed so many times. From um, uh, the Hebrew calendar, and then, you know, of course you had the Persians, you had the Syrian calendar, all of that, man. The Egyptian calendar, but it's been changed uh, with the Romans. They changed it with, with uh, Julius Caesar. He did away with the uh, Hebrew calendar. All right. I think it was uh, 45 BC. He, he did away with it. This is Exodus 13 and 1. And Yahweh, Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. And whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And that's, been, that's what's been given to Yahweh Shai, um, all the children of Israel. But out of them, the elect, uh, to, to walk into his, uh, his, his rest with him. It says, and Moses said unto the people, remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, Yahweh brought you out from his place. There shall no leaven, uh, leaven bread be eaten, man. This day came ye out in the month of bed, man. So now, uh, so that's the beginning of our month in the months of Bib, which uh, I think is uh, Abiyab, Abiyaba, which means like um, spring. So that'd be, uh, be around April, all right, which is called springtime, the blossoming of the, of, the, um, of the rain and the flowers. Now it says, um, there should be no leavened bread eaten. So after the Passover, that's the night we were taken out of Egypt on that holy day. And then uh you had uh the Le feast of the eleven of eleven bread that's, that's held um after that. Alright. So all right, this is the word um Abib. It says Ab Abiyaba. All right, it says green um green a young ear of grain, fresh, young barley's, uh, barley ears, barley month of ear forming, of greening of crop, of greening of growing green a bit abyab, abyaba, was it mainly the young um, grains, month of Exodus and Passover, around March or April. <laughs> so, so it says, uh, meaning to be tender, right? So it's clear. But let's go down to the bottom where it says, it says, um, the name of the month, Abib or Nissan. And Nissan is a Greek term, man. All right, Nissan, they were giving, they were paying homage to all their deities 
um, Babylonian putting uh, the name Tammuz in their month Tammuz in the Bible. That's not that wasn't the name of these months, man. All right, they had Hebrew names before that. All right, as you um, let your eyes adjust to this right here, the original calendar is on the left where you had the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, you know, uh, month. But um, you also now, and, and these are the, uh, the Hebrew terms form on the left, but that's Yiddish, so you have to translate it. But then you have the next one that says, uh, the one that says before exile, right? before we got exiled into uh, Babylon, you know, in, in Syria, Assyrian Babylon. So it says after exile, see, they put their pagan, their Babylonian uh, terms on us. It says after exile, Nisan, Ayar, Siwan, Tammuz. So that's when they put that damn uh, calendar on us, put them names on, on the year. And our people started going by that calendar, the Babylonian calendar, you know, the Persian calendar. Then later on, the Greek, the Greek and Roman calendar. The Roman style calendar, right? So um, today they have these these names here on the right, where it says correspondence. All right, so the beginning of the year really starts in around March, and even in the Julian calendar, before Julius Caesar changed it to January, being the the, the uh, beginning of the year, he originally had it as March. All right, around that time. Uh, and March is the name of Mars. It goes to Mars. And all these months and year, years, months and days are all pagan terminology. All right, so you have the the, the days here, man. It says, um, I'm going to start from Monday at the bottom. Monday is the is giving honor and paying homage to the moon. And the Lord said we're not supposed to do that. All right, worshiping planets. You know? It's uh, Sunday, which is the honor, giving honor to the sun. All right. And they always pay homage to the sun um, uh, in Rome. Now it says uh, Friday, Freya's Day, Thursday, Thor's Day. See, they worship Thor. Wednesday, Woden's Day or Odin. And that's the same person they worship on Christmas or Santa Claus. All right. Tuesday, uh, Tears, uh, Tuesday. Wow. May Day, which is supposed to be March or Mars. They give an honor to Mars, man. All right. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, you have seven days of the week, but it's all mixed up. And they give honor to the sun deity, which they call the first day of the week. Shit is fucking weird. And they, they assume Saturday is the end, the end of the week. But the Lord didn't go by that. He went by day one, day two, day three. Day four, and ultimately day seven. You know, day seven is the Sabbath. That's the day of rest, the seventh day. This is Deuteronomy 4 and uh, 19. And this is when he was telling Moses to tell us, hey, don't worship these damn idols. Don't worship the stars, the sun, and the moon. Don't, don't honor that shit. All right. Don't even uh, let any of uh, uh, names of other idols come out of thy mouth, unless you unless it's in a rebuke form, rebuking them. This is Deuteronomy four nineteen. It says, "Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them." which Jehovah thy power have divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So the Lord set up the sun, moon, and stars as like a timepiece or like a watch or, or a harvest time or a time just to tell you holy days or a time to set up a schedule of days, things like that. But it's not to be driven to worship as powers. The true powers are is Jehovah, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, and the holy angels. That's it. All right, you had something called um, the Edict of Milan and also this Edict of, for Sunday worship or um, giving uh, honor on Sunday, which people already um, 
they already honored Sunday uh, in Rome, all the way back to the, the times of Julius Caesar. But, um, you know, uh, with Constantine, he said it and established it as with, with you churches uh, hold dear to your heart now Sunday. You know, because the Roman calendar originally had eight days. And because of that, their calendar was always off and they didn't have a rest day. They had no rest days, man. You know, so they tried to fix it <laughs> and throw Sunday in there as the rest day. All right. We, uh, now, it says legal reforms. Constantine's laws enforced and reflected his Christian attitudes. On March 7, 321 uh, AD, all right. That was around the time of the um, Council of Nicaea, right before the first Council of Nicaea. Um, it says Sunday already uh, sacred um, to Christians and to the Roman sun god Sol, Sol Evictus was declared an official day of rest. So that's when he did it in 321, all right, in his edict. And then World Councils, he set up um, Sunday as a, a Christian law. And that's why all the churches in America worship on Sunday. See that? And they have rest on Sunday. Call it Palm Sunday and all that shit, man. But the Lord don't deal with that. The Lord is against all of that shit. And that calendar is off. The Lord goes from evening to evening. And they go from day to night, light to darkness. All right. All right, I'm going to read this. Um, it says, with the freeing of slaves, uh, farmers alone were permitted to continue working on the Sabbath. And they call Sunday the Sabbath, their rest. But the Lord said his rest is the seventh day. And Sunday is not the seventh day. All right. Um, now it says, because uh, you count the seventh day from the new moon. So whenever the new moon lands, uh, at the, the one evening to the next evening from the new moon, that's the new moon feast. And then after that, you have the first day. And then seven evenings from that, you have the seventh day. And that can land on any day, man, according to their calendar. All right, with the new moon. But now they go by the solar calendar, lunar calendar. Uh, so like a, a solar calendar, which deals with the sun. And they go by the harvest of the sun or the crops and things like that. Um, instead of going by the new moon, the, the, the moon is perfect and it's changing, man. He set it up as a perfect schedule. And the, the sun uh, sets us up for harvest and things like that. Yeah, that's true. Like with spring, you know, and certain um, seasons, like autumn, or winter when the sun is gone, or even when it's out, but the winter, you know. But the new moon is a sign of feast. It's a sign of uh, uh, rest days and things like that. I'm going to get that in a minute. But it says, uh, Constantine chose Sunday to be the day for Christian worship. And Constantine was a Jake, so-called black man. And he sold out. He was a Greek Christian, which neither one of those have anything to do with the Bible. We were first called Christians in Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, but there was a negative de uh, term that they put on us, saying, oh, look at those Christians. Look at those followers of the Christ in the Greek terms. What really was, look at those followers of the anointed, Hamashiach. See that? Let's get them. All right. So um, it says, named after the pagan sun god Evictus, man. Sunday had become the day when wages were traditionally paid to workers, uh, leading it to be seen as a day of celebration and thanks. And that's what they celebrate on Saturdays too now, Fridays. And corresponding the Christian Sabbath with an already established day of rest, Constantine ensured that his decree would be accepted swiftly and harmoniously. In all major Christian denominations, Sunday continues to be observed as a holy day, remaining the day of choice for church attendance. For other religions, the Sabbath falls on the other days of the week. <laughs> See that? Some, some of you idiots celebrate 
on Friday, Friday, Sabbath, and Saturday, which is off. Going according to Freya Day or Saturn, you know. I'm going to read the last part I left out. It says, the gradual process towards Christian tradition, and the Lord said we're not supposed to follow after the traditions of men. And ritual was underscored in 321 when on the 7th of March, Constantine decreed that the diasolus or the day of the sun or the, or the day of the sun should be observed as a, as a universal day of rest. The pious observance of the Sabbath was important in expressing thanks for God's toil and showed different deference um, to the claim that Yahweh rested on the seventh day of the creation. Wow, man. So he changed it and gave honor to his deity, um, his false idol, uh, uh, Sol Evictus, which is the sun. It added that in, you know, mingled that in with the scriptures, you know, perverse perverseness. All right, you have right here. Um, this was the original uh, calendar before uh, uh, when Julius Caesar uh, established it. And he changed it and put January and February uh, as the beginning of the year. You know, he changed that man forty five uh, BC. All right, he created what would you call Mart Martius, uh, Aprilis. Um, Maia, Junius, Quintilus, which would be uh, uh, July, and Sextilius, September, which would be like seven, October, eight, November, nine, December, ten, January. <laughs> See that, man? All the confusion, man. And February. Now, the reason he changed it, uh, he put January and February up, up top. Is to give honor to those deities, man. He put them up front. All right, January, which means um, is a, a deity, a demon called Januarius, meaning uh, a god of the, the of the end and the beginning, the past and done with the past and moving on to the new. That's what they call it, New Year. So they start their New Year. It changes all around, man. See that, man? He sought to change times and laws. And they put January and February in front of May or March, all right? And Mar Martius was uh, the, the time, the month of the martyrs. That's when they usually go to war, send out their army. So they, they gave honor to Mars on March, all right? Now, th this shows you confusion because right here you have December. And December is a, means a decimal or a 10, all right? But they say it's 12 months in a year. But if you count from January to December, that's 12 months. But if you read the actual definitions of each terminology or name, December is the 10th month. So that's why they had it as um, January and February at the end. So they confused anyway, man. They were giving honor to their deities. The Lord said that month is called Ab Yabah or the first month, all right, which would be around March or, or April. That's that's what it's supposed to be. And since then, um, with their establishment of this calendar, it's been a day early um, ever since 45 BCE. It's, it, it came in a day early, and um, every 128 years later, it will be a day early. So if you calculate that all up till now, it would be like 2,063 years from 45 BC all the way till now. So... However many 128 years you have, you know, it, it, be, it became a day earlier every time. You know, you add them up. And then also, um, this calendar got changed and amended with uh, Pope Gregory. All right. Uh, the 13th. And he was an Edomite, you know, of the Catholic Church, uh, the Pope. All right, because they had, um, and that's what they have, what you call the, the leap year. All right, Julius, C Julius Caesar established the four year, uh, every four years there's a leap year because when he had it, it was it's called, it was, um, it was say 365, 365 days in a year, but it's when you write it out, it's 365.25. All right, 
need a point twenty five a uh, part of a day. So, so every four years, that is in the way, man. It's like you miss an extra day. Um, so they 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 try to fix it with what they call a leap year, every four years to fix that twenty five point twenty five. And that's what Julius Caesar tried to do. So they were trying to fix it, man, fix holes in the boat. And Pope Gregory um, amended it and adjusted it and came up with what we call today the Gregorian calendar. And that's what everybody's going by uh, to where it's an 11-day difference between the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar. Right? The, the Julian calendar is 11 days ahead of this current calendar that, that we have today. All right. And they changed the whole um, uh, leap year process. They changed um, uh, the establishment of the months and put February in place and so on and so on, man. He just changed a lot of shit. You, you know, probably do a lesson on Pope Gregory too. And these are all Edomites that were messing with the laws and, and, uh, and the Lord was filtering us through these nations. And as we passed through these nations, we would fall more and more until we were, what, wiped off the earth. Only thing was left here was our flesh. And he said he's gonna do away with us spiritually. But how is he gonna do that? Is he gonna erase us off the earth? No. He 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 took our spirit from us, the comfort from us. And we walk around as zombies upon this damn earth. And our bodies, he gave them over to these nations. And let them do what they want with the body. You see that? And passed us around. Alright. Because we didn't listen. All right, this is Ecclesiasticus 43 um, and 1. The pride of the height, the clear firmament, the beauty of heaven, which is glorious show, right? And this is when he was establishing. Um, he had already created the sun and moon, and now he was establishing their purpose unto man, just like spoken of in Genesis, the book of Genesis. All right, after he created the earth, uh uh, he established his purpose to man uh, later, all right, and what it was going to be for. So he created it. It was created the first day, and on the fourth day, he gave it his purpose. And it's right there in the damn scriptures, man. And right here it says what? Um, the sun, when it appeared, right, appeared to who? Into the heavens? No, appeared to man on the earth. What is it going to do to them? How is the firmament going to affect man? Is it going to be? Uh, it, it shows the pride of heaven. You know, we look up at it. You see that? Uh, it says, um, and even when you look at the sun, you can't really see the sun perfectly. If you put a camera up to the sun, you're going to see the ball of the sun, of the globe of the sun. You know, the mass. But if you look at it with your naked eye, you're going to see the glare off the firmament. And that's what we see as sun rays or gamma rays or prisms, which do exist. All right. Light round. Now it says, uh, the sun, when it appeareth, declaring at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the Most High. So it's just an instrument, man. You know, it's not a child of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It's an instrument of theirs. At noon, it parches the country, and who can abide the burning heat thereof? All right. So when it's at its highest point, it's, it um, parches the country, man. And if, and if he really wanted to turn up the heat, he could. And nobody, everybody would burn the hell up. So the Lord has it perfectly uh, uh, at a distance because of gravity, that gravitational pull between the earth and the sun and the moon and the pushing away of the gravity as well. The magnetic fields keeps it at a perfect distance going, um, going around the earth. All right. To where we're not parched or burnt, burnt the hell up. You see that? So it says, um, and a man blowing a furnace is in works of heat, but the sun burning burneth the mountains three times more, breathing breathing out fiery vapors. That's that um, uh, nuclear combustion, uh, what you call, um, you know, uh, helium. All right. <laughs> anyway. No, it says, uh, uh, the, but the sun burned up the mountains three times over, breathing out fiery vapors. And, uh, and through those vapors, you have the actual beams of light that come from it. All right. You have vapors, which is the fire or the, um, 
actual physical element. People don't think the sun is physical, but it is. It's a physical element, right? But light shines through it. We are physical elements, but light can't shine through us yet. All right, we're gonna have we're gonna have um a physical elemental bodies, extraterrestrial bodies someday that light can actually shine through. All right, so it says um breathing out fiery vapors and sending so that's fire or nuclear fire, all right? Nuclear energy and sending forth bright beams. It dimmeth the eyes. Those are called gamma rays. Or what you call prisms, all right? And that's what touches our eyes. You can't even see them, but they're there. Verse five: Great is Yahweh that made it. Yahweh Bashim was shy, man. Made that whole process, the every everything about it. And at His commandment, runneth hastily. So it started. He set the clock. It was still. Then He set it in motion. Boom. And after that, it's never stopped. That's why He had day one, day two, day three, all the way up to a thousand years. And then that's 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 um the first thousand years. And you go again, day two, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, all the way up to a thousand years. It has not changed, man. A thousand years unto man is, is a day to Yahweh. And that started when at the creation of the sun and the moon. All right, when he set them in motion around the sun, around the earth. So they run hastily. All right. Not the earth. These, the sun and the moon run hastily around the earth. And the earth spins, but it spins on the axis. All right. Um, he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world, man. And that's why we see the red moons, blue moons, super huge moons, uh, half moons, black moons, is, you know, lunar eclipses. Full lunar eclipse with a blood moon, and these are signs to the children of Israel, and 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 also to the to these heathens of warning and saying, "Hey, he about to come destroy him." Like America is a black moon over America, or a red moon, a bunch of blood moons. That's a sign of judgment on America, and a sign of the children of Israel's salvation. All right, but the sign of feast represent the Sabbath, which is a rest. All right, a holy day. Um, also a sign of um, the new moon feast, all right? which the Romans, they used to celebrate and pay homage to um, Jupiter and Juno. They would pay homage to Juno, uh, which is like a, a female deity. All right? um, and they would pay homage to that damn demon every first of the month of their months. All right, and then the middle of their months, they will pay homage to Jupiter, and that's how you broke down the month in sections. And, he, and even according to our true calendar, we broke the month down in about three sections. All right, the first part of the month, the middle part of the month, and the end of the month. So it says, um, he made the moon also to serve in her season, for a declaration to declare the times, man. All right. And a sign of the world from the moon is the sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. All right, so it's perfect. It waxes, it wanes, full moon, new moon. Be a beautiful calendar. The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing. It's a wonderful thing to see the process of the light shining on sunlight shining on the moon. And the angle that we see it on, um, you know, uh, show even shows the creation of the earth and how the light um, uh, comes from the earth. All right. The light is on the earth. Now, um, the way the sunlight reflects on the, the moon. And you see part of the moon, it waxes, it wanes, but then you see the other side is lit up. That's the same way the earth was lit up in the beginning. On one side, it was dark. And on the other side, it's lit up just like today. Just like today, man. It hasn't changed, all right? Now it says, um, verse 10. No, verse 9. The beauty of heaven, the glory of the stars right, at night. So, so, you know, it's the glory of the, 
of the stars at night. An ornament um, giving light in the highest place of Yahweh. So it's an ornament, like an ornament hung up in the sky on the Shemayim. He set it in place. At the commandment of Yahweh, of the Holy One, they will stand in their order and never faint in their watches. All right, just like a watch on your wrist. Never faint in this faint in this going around in this course and, and what he set it up to do. All right. So we, we're supposed to go according to the new moon um, to tell the seven the days, day one, day two, day three, a cod, you know. Um, all right, and the only reason that we were, um, have lost our calendar is because it was all prep preparing and being set up and established for the kingdom. All right, the laws were set up and established really for the kingdom, you know, um, and set up as a standard upon the earth to let us know what sin is and to create a division and a sift upon the earth to divide the sheep from the goats all right, amongst Israel. Now, um, verse 11, it says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? So the Lord took away our sacrifices at that time. And now he only allowed a small remnant to offer a specific spiritual sacrifice, which are these words, the truth. It says, Say, Yahweh, I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of goats. So the Lord took away our burnt offerings. He took away our holy days. You know, at, um, the last person that threw a Passover was um, King Josiah. All right. Um, you know, the, 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 the sincere Passover. And he threw one of the biggest Passovers ever. He called all the children of Israel to one place. Now, uh, usually you eat the Passover, you eat it at your home. All right. It says, I delight not in the blood of bullocks. So the Lord took it away at the 609 BC when he had them nations destroy us and then all the way up to the Diadoshi, you know, where they took away um, completely the uh, the law of sacrifice. All right. Um, when ye come to appear before me, who have required this at your hand to tread my course? Bring no more of vain oblations incense is an abomination unto me the new moons and sabbaths right the new moons and sabbaths so the new moon what is the beginning of the damn month and then you have your sabbath which is the seventh day after that all right so you celebrate your new moon and you celebrate the sabbath it says uh the calling of assemblies i cannot away with it is iniquity and balance. Even the solemn meeting, your new moons and your appointed feast, which are the holy days, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. All right. So the Lord took that away from us. And that's why um, Julius Caesar and all these nations, the Lord allowed them to peel the flesh from us and, and uh, peel the history and our customs away from us. All right. Um, to your new moons and your, your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. All right. Um, all right this is the process that the Lord works. Uh, this, the, the statue of Nebuchadnezzar through all those nations, starting from Assyria to Babylon to Greece, uh, uh, to the Persians and the Medes, to the uh, Greco Empire to the Diadoshi, the Seleucid Empire, to the Roman Empire, to um, America today, the European Union, all of that, NATO. Uh, the Lord used all them nations and had Esau as the bottom of the goddamn barrel, the, the base and the pit of hell upon earth of these nations. He had us fall under them. And that's when we truly hit the bottom, bottom to where they raced us from off the earth, not physically, but spiritually. They were confederate against us. Now it says, um, Joel 1 and 3. Uh, t uh, actually, 2. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Have this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? 
tell ye your children of it, and you let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. All right, he did that through his word. Over time, the word passed on. That which the palmer worm have left, have the locusts eaten. And he's talking about these nations, man. All right, whatever one nation left behind with us, the next nation that took over uh, uh, filtered us through their shit and had us even more um, the child of the devil of deception, children of deception. All right, every time passing through their nations, all the way up to Esau, to where we were cut off in 70 AD and scattered as a nation. All right, um, and, and that which the locusts have left have the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm have left have the caterpillar eaten, man. All right. And that's what um that's what happened. The Lord cut us off from the earth. And uh ultimately the caterpillar <laughs> is probably Esau, man, you know. Ate up everything. Psalms 83 and 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from be being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, our holy days either, or our calendar or anything. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and Ishmael, the Arab, the Moab, Chinese, the Hagarines, the Gabal, Ammon, Amalek. So I'm going to keep going, but basically all them damn heathens on the earth um, over different ages and kingdoms. In each kingdom, they've been confederate against us at some point to help with the whitewashing of, of uh, the stripping away of our tree, snatching the leaves off the branches, man, making us bare, leaving us naked as an unfruitful tree or vine. All right, Isaiah 1, 16. But even though the Most High put away put us away, everything about to come back. Our calendar, everything will be given back to us. And every, um, um, you know, certain times of the year, these heathens going to have to come unto us and bring all their, their wealth unto us, man, and, and, and pray to the true and living power. They're going to submit and bow down to the true and living power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. <clears throat> So it says to Israel, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil, man. So yeah, we got to go to work on Monday and things like that. But when you give honor to his holy days, the Sabbath, you honor it on, according to the new moon. And then seven, seven evenings after that, you have the new moon. And the same day that the new moon landed on, you have the Sabbath, all right, uh, seven days later. And you... you um, you, you call them by their true names. Even with the days, you go by Akkad, you know, Shenya, uh, and so on and so on with the numbers, all right? It would be Akkad Yawam, or Yawam Akkad would be like day one, day two, day three, day four. All right, um, verse 17, uh, learn to do well. So we got to learn to do well. Seek judgment, re relieve the oppressed, so once you you learn the truth and cleanse yourself as much as possible, you're able to get the beam, the moat out of your eye. You're able to get the moat out of other people's eye as well. That's blinding their path. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, say if you have, though your sins be as scarlet, all right, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And that's Esau, crimson. And that's the root word of the word criminal. All right? And we became criminals. What the Lord said, he's going to what? Um, wash us and make us clean. And he, he loves us. All, right? all those things he gave to us, he set that up for the kingdom. And now it's all going to be given back to us. Our holy days, our feast, the true knowledge is given back to us now. The law is going to be given back to us completely in that day. He's going to put them in our inward parts. And it's going to be established upon the earth. The tabernacle of David, our home. You see that? The proper names of things. Using the, the sun, the moon, the stars as instruments. 
So in, in the universe is going to be given to the children of Israel. So they're going to be instrument to enjoy. Uh, and so also, I want to make a point because um, outside of the firmament, inside of the firmament, you can't hear the sun or the stars or the moon. But if you listen to recordings of the sun and the moon and the star, they're actually singing or humming. And it's so loud, it's like a harmony. All right, from the vibration and the energy that's coursing through them. All right, this is Second Ezra 1, 28. Thus saith Yahweh, uh, the Almighty Lord, have I not prayed you as a father his sons? As a mother, her daughters, and a nurse, her young maid, a uh, young babes, that ye would be my people, and I should be your power; that ye would be my children, and I should be your father. I gathered you together. This is Yahweh speaking, <clears throat> as a hen gathereth his chickens under her wings. But now, what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. You know, and that's what the Lord has done, and that's why. Everything has been cast out, even the, the new moon feast. It says, when ye offer unto me, I will turn my face from you. For your solemn feast days, your new moons, and your circumcisions, I have forsaken. All right. So the Lord has forsaken it. And that's the only reason we don't have the, um, the, the clear understanding of what time we're in or the new moon. So it could all be a mystery and established in the kingdom when Yahweh shot shows up. Everything's with Yahweh shot. When we establish, when we're taken out of this Egypt, He's going to give us our um, our holy days again, right? Give it all back to us. But right now, we're supposed to um, rehearse the righteous acts. It says, uh, verse thirty-two. I sent unto you my servants, the prophets, whom ye have taken and slain, and torn their bodies in pieces, whose blood I will require at your hands, saith Yahweh. Thus saith the Almighty, your house is desolate. I will cast you out as the wind do a stubble. And he did that. He scattered us around the four corners of the earth, took away our holy days, took away the new moon feast. And he, he finished it and established it with Julius Caesar and all these other nations. All right. And even these other nations represent the army of Yahweh. He's, a, he's the Lord of hosts, of armies, man. It says... And his children shall not be fruitful, for they have despised my commandment and done the thing that is an evil before me. Your houses will I give to, to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me yet shall believe in me, to whom I have showed no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded. And that's happening today. All right. So you people that are standing up for this American calendar, standing up for the days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all that shit. Saturn day, Sunday, worshiping on Saturday, calling your Sabbath on the Sunday and Saturdays. You know, hey amen. Scripture says, judge not a man in the Sabbath, but we still got to teach according to truth's sake that the Sabbath goes according to the new moon and not according to Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. All right. And the months are not supposed to be called January's, and it was all rearranged anyway. The months originally started in March, of which was, um, was called um, the month Abib, all right, or Abiyaba, or Abiyab. Uh, Jeremiah 6 and 16, Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, man. And that's what we're doing now. And where, where do you do that at? Out in the streets, or on the internet, on any of the highways and byways, the internet, how, internet highways as well. You reach out to brothers or Akim or apostles or elders, and you, you may say, hey, what's what's going on? Man? I want to I want to go back to the ways of old. I want to call myself an Israelite again. You know, I want to I want to follow his ways. When's the new moon? OK, cool. What year are we in? We don't know. But how do we get back on track? Follow the new moon. You see that? Use it as an instrument to be on track with your Sabbaths and your holy days and things like that. And you ain't going to keep it perfect, but you do it to the best of your ability. We rehearsing it. It says, um. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk therein, man. All right, man. This is Judges 5 and 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, 
there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his village, villages in Israel. Then shall the people of Yahweh go down to the gates, man. So what does it say? Uh, we're going to return to the, the righteous acts to Yahweh and also to our people, meaning our customs and our laws and the holy days and the prayer to Yahweh and the service of Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. All right. And righteousness. All right. Now, it's in the place of drawing water and, and draws of water and hewers of wood are people that are in bondage or workers or servants or slaves. All right. And during that time with Deborah, uh, we, when we were in bondage, um, she she told uh, Barak, you know, and the, and the, and the young um, brothers of Israel that was still around, she was saying, hey, man, if y'all want to learn, you know, meaning she's not a teacher, but hey, if y'all if y'all want to get back on track, prophets and kings, um, I've, I've whispered this word that I've learned from my four parents. I've told it to the daughters of Israel, to the women. And they're sitting by the water, drawing water. And as they're drawing the water, they're singing. And as they sing, they're singing the words to you. You see that? And she said, go down there and listen. And, and act like you're not listening so they don't put you in bondage, you know, or destroy you. Act like you're not listening and, and, and eat. Because y'all have lost your way. You know, things like that. And now today, where we draw water is out on the street. All right, that's where wisdom cry out in the streets. So wisdom is drawn from the waters of the streets um, uh, where, where the elect and the prophets are going to be teaching. See that? But then you have, um, and, and there we shall rehearse the righteous acts, and that's in these times as well. All right, we rehearse the righteous acts spiritually and also physically to the best of our ability. All right, and turning back to the old ways and for truth's sake, paying homage to, um, to the true calendar, um, which goes according to the lunar calendar, the new, the new moon, not the solar calendar. And we're not supposed to worship the moon, right? And it was um, altered and changed by Esau uh, numerous times and, and fully, fully uh, changed, perverted with Julius Caesar, right? And uh, the Gregorian calendar today. So with that, I'm going to say... Uh, Kahalayim la Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Harukakudash, my ma, double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and, and the elders, and Shalom to you, Akim, and Aguatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. All right, I'm going to read this. It says, an easy pagan calendar using the common solar months. And that's what they went by. They went by the solar months, man, by the sun. Complete opposite of what the Most High told the children of Israel. All right, see these heathens made us go according to the sun, man. It's crazy, and they worship the sun. So it says the month January um, is Hera or Juno or uh, Januarius. February was uh, um, Neptune, Poseidon. Uh, March they gave honor to Athena or Mars. Um, April, which was um, Aphrodite. Or what they call Apollos, uh, May, what they call Apollo, so like it was Venus and, and Apollo. June, it, it was um, honoring Mercury. July was honoring Jupiter. August, Ceres, Ceres, Ceres. I don't give a fuck about the name. September, Vulcan. October, they honored Mars. Or with March, they honored Mars. All right. <laughs> they switched it around, gave honor to Mars. Um, and so on and so on, man. So it's just awesome bullshit. You see this, all this shit, man. It's Hellenic, Hellenic calendar, man, from the Hellenistic periods. All right. Stemming from Alexander all the way to the Diadoshi, which pushed out their paganism around the four corners of the earth and, and helped with the establishment of Rome. And you know, which came later, you know, um, built upon their pagan paganism. So, hey, man, just this is what it is, man. So then I'm going to say uh, Shalom.